From the attack of the Capitol building to the snatching of ballot boxes in Ghana and also on the home front, the publisher of Ovation Daily Momodu, Piazzi Paul. And Labour says it is impossible as Kano State reverts to 18,000 Naira minimum wage from agreed 30,000 Naira. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome to Plus Politics. The events of the past few days have been nothing short of shock with the attack on, of the Capitol Hill building in the United States, the snatching of ballot box in Ghana during the parliamentary elections, the words of Noretta, uh, Loretta Onoche as regards several issues in the country. It simply has been an eventful week. And to discuss these issues and more, we have the publisher of Ovation magazine, Dili Mamadou. Good evening, Chief Mamadou. Uh, good evening, Kade. How are you? Yeah, good to have you. Quite a lot of issues. Let me start from the one that is currently uh, trending now. Uh, you are in the news. And... Uh, I, I was just wondering what could have gone wrong. And some would say that probably your response has made the story big. And that has to do with you calling the, 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 one of the aides of the president a scavenger. And I felt, could that be from you or you were being misquoted? Uh, well, I don't think it's a big news, except that... Uh, Anyone who knows Madame Loretta knows that she's a very troublesome woman. <laughs> so my description of her is very appropriate. When I say scavenger, there are scavengers always in the corridors of power. That also is nothing new. She's fond of insulting people. And I wanted her to know that nobody has a monopoly of madness. And so that's why I responded appropriately. Uh, I have a policy in life, and I was taught that policy by my boss, uh, Mr. Mike Awuifa. He says, you don't attack a man who has a medium of reply. In this era of Google, everything you say is captured for posterity. If con someone calls you a thief and you refuse to respond, because people are going to tell you, oh, don't respond, don't respond. Google is going to capture you that once upon a time you were called a thief and you did not respond, so you must be a thief. So it is no longer a situation where people say silence is golden. Silence is no longer golden. Okay. Uh, Madam uh, Loretta attacked me a few years back and I did respond. And she's done it again today, and I've responded, and I will continue to respond to her because she feels that's her job as a personal aide to President Buhari. I can bet my life that she has not met President Buhari one-on-one -on -one as much, as many times as I've met him. And uh, she has no reason to insult people just for saying that this government has not lived up to expectation. I was one of those who supported Buhari. She wasn't there. I didn't know her. I didn't see her. And so... Okay. We have a right. We criticize President Jonathan. Then they used to hail off. They were very happy. Anytime we attacked Jonathan, they were happy. And when I met with the president in 2015, I told him I was going to be doing the same thing, appointing myself free of charge as special <laughs> advisor to President Jonathan by advising him every week. Okay. And that's okay. what I've been doing, advising our Chief, president from time to time. Chief, and anybody quite, uh, who does it like that, I wish the person good luck. Okay, Mr. Dele Momodo, oh, we, quite a lot of things for us to talk about. Uh, but I will try my best not to play the devil's advocate. We will reach out to Loretta to see whether she would uh, also give her own take. But let's put it in context. On record, I remember those days that you, you, re you referenced uh, when you were with uh, Buhari during the campaign. 
And uh, some would say that um, they were shocked that you had to appoint yourself to criticize some of the things he's doing. But that's OK. But can we look at uh, the import of what she said? Uh, how insulting did you consider that statement from her so that people can be on the same page with you? That was, that was, not, the, that was not the main insult. The main insult is to say that those of us criticizing Buhari were doing so because we have not been paid money. I mean, I don't want to use foul language. There is nothing more insulting. Let me just use your word. I was going to use a different word. Where was she when we were spending our hard-earned money on promoting Buhari till today? Go and check my Instagram page. Go and check my Twitter page. I promote Buhari every day. That's why my criticism of him. There is no Nigerian who does that in his private capacity without being paid a penny till today. She should, if she doesn't know, if she's not aware, because I know that there is a duplication of jobs inside that so rock. A lot of them are not needed. But after lobbying, it's possible they will give them a job by fire by force. She should ask by Oboriwo. She should ask Sunday Agaizi. She should ask Tolani Ali, who works in the office of the vice president, who they send all their pictures to on daily basis. And she should go and, she should go and ask if I've ever collected any pennies from 2014 to date from Buari or from, from anybody working for Buari, she should go and check it. Okay, Chief. So to say we are angry because we are not paid is the height of insults. Okay, Chief, can we, uh, for the purpose of people who will, uh, who will definitely probably not agree with you, can you also put the record straight that some may say, oh, after all you've done for Buhari, and Buhari has not compensated you with any appointment, therefore, that might be responsible for your uh, uh, tweet and your messages. How do you also convince them that that has nothing to do with what you're doing? I, I don't have to convince anybody. Okay. Anybody who wants appointment knows the procedure of getting appointment in Nigeria. I'm not a member of APC. I'm not a member of PDP. So how can I expect an appointment from a government that I am not in their party? Anybody who wants appointment will not criticize government. It will be praising government, like Loretta and others have been praising government. So if I was hungry and I need appointment, I know my house to Chichinubu's house is five minutes away. I will go there. By the time I will sit for two, three days, I will get an appointment in Lagos State. If I cannot get an appointment... In, in, in Abuja. Okay. Anybody who knows me knows that I work very closely with the chairman of the governor's forum in the days of Abacha. I was one of those who was working for Radio Kudirat from London. So if I need an appointment, I will go to Governor Kawadifaye and say, please, I am hungry. Take me to Abuja. It will not take six months before they will put me somewhere. So okay. I am not hungry. I'm a global citizen. So And that is why I am telling Loretta Stop insulting everybody. It's not every Nigerian that is hungry. I am not hungry. If I need appointment, all I need to do is to start praising government. So when you see somebody who is not praising government, you know that person is not hungry. Okay. God has blessed some of us. I have a job. Okay, good. If let's, I am tired. Let's Nigeria, quickly move. As a global citizen, I can pick up a teaching appointment anywhere in the world. Okay, Chief. Anywhere in the world. Chief, I, 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 know, I know how you feel. I, I know how you feel about what she said. But let's quickly move to another, I will call it another country that you belong, and that's Ghana. I remember the last time you appeared on this channel. Okay, no, the one before the last time, when you were talking about the build-up to Ghana election. And some of the things you said is that Ghanaians are so politically sophisticated, um, what, with what happened, uh, is it okay to say that um, it is time for your friend, Mahama, to accept the verdict, or you think it deserves to go to court like he has done? Oh, he has gone to court, so there is nothing to accept again. If he accepted the verdict, he would not have gone to court. And uh, what he's asking for in court is very simple and straightforward. He didn't say he won the election. He said, based on the coalition by the Electoral Commission of Ghana, that there should have been a tie, which would have led to a runoff. 
the electoral commission itself admitted to making mistakes. I've never seen such mathematical errors in any election. So, but I'm not a judge. I cannot comment on it. So, and he has gone to court, asking the court to find the best mathematicians in Ghana or anywhere in the world, so that when they add up, because in Ghana, you must have 50 plus one before you can be declared president. And he's saying that by their own mathematical calculation that uh, President Anna Akufuado has not met that requirement. Right, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it's up to uh, the courts of Ghana to determine that. So I can't really comment on it. And you must know that yesterday already, President Anna Akufuado was sworn in for the second term. Second term. So I wish him and I wish Ghana uh, the best of luck. Okay, uh, uh, before you leave Ghana, let's stay with another thing. Why we're still trying to recover from that huge shock that we saw in America, which we are going to talk about anytime soon. There was a big drama at the parliament. The Ghana you describe as sophisticated, what really happened? How do you describe such a snatching of ballot box at a parliamentary uh, session there? And being sophisticated does not mean that you will not have a, a few bad eggs. And the man who snatched the ballot has apologized anyway. <laughs> it happens. It happened in America. We saw what happened in America. Would you have expected that anybody would, that thugs, hoodlums would go and take over the Capitol? But it happened before our very eyes. So sophistication has nothing to do with occasional skirmishes. What I know is that Ghana has done very well in the area of protecting uh, their democracy. They had a, revol a revolution under Rollins, and I believe this has helped them. Uh, even the election that was collect uh, conducted recently on the December 7, last year, the election was very well co conducted. It was the coalition that is the problem. Uh, people went about voting peacefully, and they were determined uh, to make sure that their votes were well counted. But it was in the process of collision that trouble started. And we saw soldiers firing shots. I've never seen that in Ghana. Uh, I landed in Ghana for the first time 25 years ago. And I've interacted with practically all the leaders from President Rollins to date. And I've never seen anything of such. So let's praise Ghana for at least making an effort. Uh, the Ghanaians went on the streets, they demonstrated. They didn't burn down houses, they didn't fire gunshots. So, and we can only pray that Ghana will continue to set good examples for other parts of Africa. No country is perfect. Now we can see that even America that's supposed to be the peak of democracy in the world is not perfect. Okay. But what we should learn from America is that we need strong institutions. Because what has saved America today is the fact that they have strong institutions. So we have a lot to learn from that. Uh, the judiciary, you see, when we say we have problems, the light has gone off again. <laughs> and this is what we go through. So that's part of the thing. When you say, oh, somebody has failed, they say we're abusing government. We're not abusing government. We're only stating the obvious. Uh, but I know that uh, where I live, if you come back, in less than one minute. So okay. that's that's fine. Okay, quick. Yes. I, I will stay with you. So let, let the conversation continue since we can see hear your voice. I, 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 I'm, you're tempting yes. me to go straight to American issue, but, I, but I'll come back to the role you played in that um, verbal exchange, or you call it uh, a mail between, or, or a write-up between um, uh, FFK and Pastor Tunde Bakari. We saw the pictures. We saw what you did. But probably you will help us how you intervene. Trust me, I will not forget to talk about that. But let's look at the America issue you've started talking about. Now, um, a whole lot of issues that happen, the evangelicals, the issue of prophecies, what God is saying and what God is not saying. And we've seen America getting more divided. What as, how far has this extremism in terms of religion, in terms of white supremacies, has affected American democracy? Well, it's unfortunate that at this time and age, America, of all 
countries in the world is still bogged down with issues of religion. Religion should be strictly a matter between a man and his God. It should have nothing to do with politics. Uh, unfortunately, the evangelicals this time have said Donald Trump is God's sole representative on earth. Maybe is the next pope. I don't know. <laughs> but some of us disagree with them. And uh, it's a shame. It's a big shame because now America is on its knees and it has taken the intervention of very, very strong institutions to resist the enemies of democracy. Um, I don't think there's any better alternative to democracy for now. So we will continue to encourage America and encourage ourselves more because we are all talking about America. It's worse back home. It is worse in Africa. You, you see an election is like going to war. There will be an election in one state and they will tell you that they are sending 30,000 security forces to the place. For what? An election should be a jamboree. It should be a festival. It should be a carnival. Let everybody vote for whosoever they want. Uh, uh, and what, that is what? why I feel so bad when government feels that we have no right to talk. It's enshrined in our constitution. Freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of opinion. Chief, Chief Momodu, let's, let's interrogate what you mentioned about uh, strong institutions. Uh, we've seen some strong critics saying that, uh, was that truly the issue that if we were to be some set of black people, you know, involved in that protest, we would have had more casualties where we saw police even retrieving, avoiding to attack these protesters who went far below the line. So don't you also think that there was some kind of strong influence of the sitting president that actually affected the response of the police? If Donald Trump was an African president or an African emperor, trust me, Biden would never be president. And I have friends who are quite close, they are Republicans in America, who even as of yesterday still told me that Trump will not go. Even after all the hula baloo. It's unfortunate that we could have such a dictator in the United States of America. In Africa, to start with, government will control the Electoral Commission. Government will control the security. Government will control, the president will control the vice president. The vice president will not go there and declare their opponent. It will, it will not happen in Africa. So what Mike Pence did two days ago was unprecedented. After all the pressure from his boss. So just imagine a professor, Yemi Oshibaju, going to say that Atiku Abubakar has won election. That day, that will be the end. Chief, chief. It uh, will not happen. Uh, chief, I, I so think... that is uh, what I, think, I meant okay. by strong institution. Okay, maybe I, I was just going to ask you that... Um, was that really the case? This is, they don't have, well, from what I understand, they don't have the Senate president. The vice president is like the Senate president. It's a constitutional role that he performed. And this was a case where he had to succumb to the constitution, which I agree with you, that is a strong institution. So because I am telling you that okay. in our own situation, we will not succumb to any constitution. The president himself will be the constitution. Hmm. In fact, the Nigerian president is the most powerful president on earth. Nobody can challenge him. That is the truth. And I'm not talking about Buhari now. Every president that has ruled in Nigeria, okay, in the Fourth Republic, from Obasanjo to Yaradua to Jonathan to Buhari, nobody will be able to challenge them. Okay, because of time, let me quickly get your thoughts, like I promised you. What really happened? How did you intervene? Because uh, trust me, 
for, for mischievous, a lot of people, they were waiting for more fireworks from uh, Fanny Coyote. And, uh, and it's almost like a tripod. We have Pastor Bart Curry, we have Fanny Coyote, we also have Yinko Dumaki. How did you quench the fire? Well, let me start by saying a big thank you to all the dramatic personnel. You know, the, the thing about me, at now over 60, I want to be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. You understand? So I want to be a peacemaker so that I can inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> I woke up very early that morning and I noticed that Chief Ferry Fanikai Ode was online on WhatsApp and my mind told me to reach out to him. So I sent him a text message and I said, FFK, please, in the name of God, I want you to cease fire. Don't attack Pastor Tudebakar. He's our Egon and he's a man that I respect and love dearly. And he responded immediately and said, thank you, my brother. I promise you, I give you my word that based on your intervention now, I will cease fire. And I thank them. And I immediately reached out also to Pastor Tudebakare. And I said, my great Egmo, please, I've, spoke, I've reached out to Femi Fanika Ode, and he has agreed, please, let's all come together. Because if you say you want a Southerner as the next president of Nigeria, if that is possible, and you say you want Southwest to produce a candidate, how come anytime they mention all the potential candidates, if they mention Kai Ode, fire me, you will fight. If they mention Tinubu, you will call in names. They mention Fashola, you will fight. You mention Bakare, you will fight. So how can you have a president when there is no unity in Yoruba land? So that was the basis upon which I intervened. And God took charge. And then my childhood friend, the Monga Jolubado, Boegadijmo, apparently in his own capacity as a spokesperson for uh, the Yoruba movement, also reached out to Pastor Bakare, reached out to Yinka Odumaki, and uh, he was even able to do a three-way call uh, to Pastor Bakare and FFK. And so uh, the next thing I saw was a tweet and a thank you to Monga Jolubadan and myself from FFK. And that was it. So the, my principle is that we must seek peace. No country can make progress without peace. And uh, we will continue to try our best. And that is why you need integrity. You need men and women of integrity. You need people who, when they speak, they know you are not speaking because you want any pecuniary gains. It's just because you want the best for your country. And that is why we will continue to resist whosoever is in government and is casting as passions on our innocent interventions. Okay, let, let me take this one, like call this one one for the road. And that has to do with some of your previous interventions. Now there is a lot of um, prophecies out there about 2021. And uh, I saw... Um, 2023. One, no, I'm even talking about 2021 now. Uh, okay, which can also dovetail into okay, 2023. Yeah. Okay. So, and one of the things that was done by an online medium is to also list... They call it list of failed prophecies. What is your take about these prophecies that are being churned out? And how should we react to it? Well, pro I believe prophecies are based on individual beliefs, your faith. Uh, I was born in a Ladra, a Ladra church, and my mom was an Elemi, you know, those who went into trance. Okay. And I knew that there were prophecies that were foretold, and those prophecies came to pass. Of course, uh, today, it is possible that people are no longer as disciplined as 
my parents were in those days. So Amulumala, what we call a pot puri of uh, you tell some truth, you tell some lies. People have commercialized religion a lot, but mm. there are still genuine prophets. Mm. I know prophet, uh, genuine prophets who, when they say things, they may not be perfect. There is no, even in the Bible, there is no prophet that is absolutely accurate. I'll give you just one example. Professor Atamils, the former president of Ghana. I met him one day. I was invited by Prophet T.B. Joshua to the synagogue. The president came from Ghana. He had just won the election. And I asked him, I said, why do you believe so much in Prophet T.B. Joshua? I said, even Nigerians, they are skeptical. And he told me, he said, no. He said the man told him emphatically that he was going to win the election when he even had no chance whatsoever of winning the election, that the man gave him specific dates when elections will hold, that it was going to go into a runoff and there will even be a third election. And it all came to pass. Said, I'm a professor, so I'm not stupid. If someone tells me one, two, three, and it happens, then why would I believe it? So there are prophecies. I can tell you that, that there are prophecies. People have told me, even when I was a young there are prophecies I, I remember from when I was about seven years old okay. about my future. And today, I can see those things come to fruition. So, of course, there are fake prophets even in the Bible. So I won't be surprised if some of them are just guesswork. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we have to call it a day with you. Uh, but Pops Politics will continue after uh, signing you off. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your intervention. And we... We encourage you to continue speaking truth to power, and we also hope that uh, they will not just see it as criticism, but they will see it as constructive criticism to push us forward. Thank you once again, Daily Momodu. Thank uh, you. Yes, we will take a short break now, and when we return, can the Labour see reasons with Kanu State Government over the plan to return minimum wage to 18,000 Naira? That is all for discussion after this break.